What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745 and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Team Spotlight. This of course is episode number two and we have an interesting team here. Now it will feature a few familiar faces so hopefully you haven't grown too sick of this team just yet. Both of these characters are coming out of Special Operations 8 and that means Vision and Omega Sentinel. And I decided to go with this team because it makes a really nice theme. And that of course is the robot theme. So the team's name is iRobot. Now some of you may already be able to guess which items my agent is going to have. There are certain items that make your agent very robotic. And one of the items that make this transition complete is the techno-organic endoskeleton. And we will get to that in just one moment. First, I just want to say that I forgot to show my items in the video footage. So I'm recording this just before I'm editing the video. And so that explains why I have so many command points and so much silver. And there will be a big discrepancy. And basically, if you don't know why I got have so many command points, you'll want to check out my video about Chapter 12, Mission 2. And I will go ahead and put a link up on the screen and also in the description. So you'll definitely want to check that one out if you want to learn the best way to farm command points currently. But for now, let's focus on my agent's armor and weapons. I'm wearing the generalist armor, and that's because I felt like if I wanted to make my agent robotic, I shouldn't have any class or specialty. So I felt generalist was best. You can already see the item up on the screen that really makes this theme complete. The techno-organic endoskeleton. And the key to this weapon, at least as far as this theme is concerned, is mechanical body. Which makes it so that your agent cannot be afflicted with bleeding or poison. He is immune to psychic and bio attacks, but he is susceptible to EMP grenades. So he's very robotic or android like, whichever you'd want to use. I know that Vision and Omega Sentinel are technically androids. Now moving on to another item. Second item is Nanite Inductive Nail Gun, and it provides a counterattack. And when you attack or counterattack with it, it puts a shield on your agent. Now this used to be very good, and it still could be usable if you're willing to pay the gold to reforge it. And I'm not willing to pay 48 gold to reforge items, at least not until I'm level 300. Next, we have an item from the current Spec Ops, and that's Vajra or Vara, and it has adaptable weaponry and splash damage and it's a ranged energy gun tech. So I thought that it resembled a weapon that a robot would use or an android would use. So that's why that's on there and also provides me with a more current weapon that does some damage. And lastly, I have Power of 4 equipped. Power of 4 of course gives you 4 turns and then you essentially blow up. So it's kind of like a robot or an android pushing itself to the limits and then you explode. At least that's how I saw it. I know it also could be someone pushing their body to the limits, but for the purpose of this theme team, I think it works. So that is my agent setup, and this is Team iRobot. Now let's move on to the gameplay. First there's going to be some computer battles, and then there's going to be some PvP action. I hope you enjoy.
You may have been able to tell that that first battle was before the changes. You probably saw Omega Sentinel's old animation, which he doesn't do anymore. So I decided to go ahead and post one after the changes and provide commentary while we battle. So anyways, my agent with these weapons, I'll be honest, he doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So I'm just pretty much going to use the Vajra and try to put the debuffs on him. And the cool part is actually Omega Sentinel. Now since Omega Sentinel can be a scrapper and a tactician, she can attack an infiltrator as a scrapper, get the double attack, then switch to tactician, and she will hit the blaster. She will double attack him, since she has that proc now. And then she gets an extra turn, so she gets a whole bunch of attacks on just one turn, or one round I should say. This will work in PvP as well. Let's say if they have an infiltrator like Nightcrawler and they have a tactician, maybe Phoenix or somebody like that. And this is of course where characters like Omega Sentinel shines. Punisher is another person that can take advantage, but it's slightly different with him because he doesn't get two turns around where she does. So basically with him, you're going to want to attack as a tactician first and then you'll get a second attack and you can switch the scrapper and double attack the infiltrator with Punisher. But anyways back to the current battle and we're gonna go ahead and use Techno Organic Endoskeleton and it didn't proc a follow-up which is what I wanted so that's too bad but this guy just stunned me so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to Bruiser and Nano Hill to stun off. And that's just another benefit of using Omega Sentinel. She places that heal and removes debuffs. So you can get things like stuns off or if somebody targeted your team with Dark Sigil. Now we're going to switch back and we're going to cast Hologram Array just to give mirror images. And maybe we'll dodge some attacks. Vision's going to blast this guy and put burning on him. And Omega Sentinel joined in on the attack. Which is just another perk of using her. I'm definitely a fan of Omega Sentinel. And if you didn't get her yet, just keep opening the 10 times option on the lockboxes. And usually what I like to do is save up at least 30 so that I can open 3 10 times options. Because usually when I open just one 10 times, I'll get a duplicate. But when I open 3, the second or the third one at least will, will often have a new cover. So go ahead and try that out. Hopefully you unlock her and I wish you all the best luck. But moving on to the last phase, we're probably going to go ahead and use power of 4 here. And that's just because I have it equipped so why not try it out. But I know I won't be able to do enough damage to kill both of these guys, unfortunately. But this is just a fun theme team. I wasn't being too serious. Otherwise I would have put a couple different weapons on then of course it would be a very viable team and also in PvP as I've shown in a past episode of the adamantium process and at least the splash damage kicked in that time I'm gonna go ahead and try the techno organic endoskeleton and see if I can get a follow-up attack and I actually forgot that that guy still had protect and there's no follow-up attack and of course I'm dead from the power of four I actually just recently got Power of 4 not that long ago and I used it for a little while but I don't really use it that often. I know with certain weapons it can be a really awesome combination but I'm not that huge of a fan of it and I don't like killing my agent off. It can be helpful and useful though especially if you have a good weapon. Like I heard the encephalizer with Power of 4 was pretty ridiculous. I'm not sure after the nerf. I actually don't have the encephalizer to try it out. But anyways, this guy's almost done. And after this battle's over, we're going to go ahead and move on to the PvP content. I'm going to show two battles with this team. And it is slightly different from the adamantium process because I'm using these weapons. And so it's not going to be quite the same. 
But I still was able to win. I think just because Omega Sentinel and Vision are such good characters. And the power of four actually kind of helps if you really needed it in PvP. But anyways, let's move on to the PvP battles. The first person that I come up against is using a very familiar PvP team. And that's Phoenix and Emma Frost. And I've seen this team countless times. The only difference is now Emma will use that move right there. Mental Trauma. Even if you have an Infiltrator. I know I don't have an Infiltrator right now, but before she used to not do that because it procs combat reflexes. But the only thing is it's a psychic attack, so you don't actually counterattack it. And I guess they changed the AI because of that. Now, as far as Vision here, I'm probably going to pass my turn since he has Mental Anguish on. So let me go ahead and just recharge. And Omega Sentinel, I'm going to use this third ability, Plasma Torch, because I want to strengthen my team and increase our attack by 25%. And the next thing I'm going to do is change protocol to a Bruiser, then I'm going to change over to a Tactician. And then what I'm going to do is cast Hologram Array and we will get mirror images so that we can hopefully dodge some attacks. Our agent's using Dark Sigil which I love that weapon it's so powerful and Vision luckily dodged it and of course she's gonna spam Psychic Attack here well actually she went with War Diamond so he phased that luckily and the stun was wasted Now that it's my agent's turn, I'm going to go ahead and shoot the Vajra and hope for the splash damage to occur. That's going to finish off their agent, so he's going to cast Sacrificial Strength and Phoenix Fire will be ready to use. So what you want to make sure to do is kill Phoenix any way possible. And so I'm going to microwave Pulse to take out the agent and also do some damage to Phoenix. And then it's pretty much up to Omega Sentinel. But I like those odds because it's a Blaster Phoenix. And whenever you see a Blaster Phoenix, you hopefully have a Tactician on your team. I always try to have some Tactician. Well, most of the time. And they will absolutely tear through Phoenix. Especially if they're stealthy or something like that. But it doesn't matter here because we took out the Protector Agent and we're able to focus Phoenix down before she does Phoenix Fire. Now we just have Emma left and she's really not a threat at all. She can win against certain teams but it's funny when she gets matched up against uh, someone like Magneto who is immune to her psychic attacks or my agent here he's mindless so she wouldn't really be able to do anything besides War Diamond Man. So of course the second team is also Phoenix and Emma Frost. Well I guess at least Phoenix is in a different costume. But she's still a blaster so Omega Sentinel will definitely be taking her out. So anyways if you're facing teams like this all the time Phoenix and Emma. You may want to put a tactician on your team. Or if you don't want just a tactician I mean you could use Punisher or Omega Sentinel and switch them to tacticians as needed. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that Phoenix doesn't cast Phoenix Fire. So if you have a character that's going to kill one of their characters, it's best just to go ahead and recharge. Even if you don't have a defensive ability or anything, you know, if you're a full attacker, just go ahead and recharge. Do not finish a character and cause Phoenix to use Phoenix Fire on purpose. Now it does happen on accident and sometimes you can tell if a team isn't going to do very much damage with it. So let's say they don't have really any buffs on her and they don't have a really high attack. So the Phoenix Fire might only do 3 or 4k. It's really not going to hurt your team too bad. Then you can go ahead and just kill whoever but usually you want to make sure she doesn't use Phoenix Fire. So what you can do is either set it up to where you can finish her in one round or try to stun her at least or anything like that just do anything you can to stop her from casting that ability 
the other day I got pretty confident when I was facing this one team that had Phoenix and I let her use it and I'm not kidding I was at full health on all three characters and she killed two of them and almost killed the third she did over 20,000 I think with a Phoenix fire so you definitely don't want to take that risk recharge do anything you can and I'm sorry that I focused so long on that but I figured since it's basically the same team there's not really a lot different that's gonna go on in this except for visions doing some huge counterattacks right there but anyways the other thing with Phoenix is and this is kind of why I don't like her that much on defense she will cast mind link first pretty much all the time and if you remove that with say scroll of Angelov, she'll cast it again so I mean she'll go some games without attacking at all because she'll just keep casting mind link and you can remove it and then you can maybe take her out before she even does a single attack so I really actually don't like her on defense now that was a pretty easy battle but if you want to see more gameplay of this team and my agent using better weapons and items you'll want to check out the adamantium process episode 6 it's going to have a lot more footage I believe there is at least four battles so if you haven't seen it already look for it on my channel that's going to be all for this episode of Team Spotlight the next episode is going to feature a very interesting team and I'm going to go ahead and just let you know right now that one of the teammates will be Union Jack so you definitely want to check that out and it will most likely be out next week I'm not sure if it'll be towards the end of the week like this one actually may go ahead and upload it Tuesday or Wednesday and try to get it out earlier so you can look forward to that one it should be exciting lastly I just want to ask you to please like comment and subscribe let's try and get 20 likes on this video that would be absolutely amazing thank you all for watching and until next time good luck and take care